Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I have started vlogging after brutal Russian invasion of my beautiful and independent country Ukraine. If you're new to the channel and you support Ukraine, please subscribe and together we will witness Ukrainian victory. And today is going to be an interesting and important vlog, plus I record it really early in the morning, which is unusual for me, but news demand that. I still have my morning coffee with me, so let's together analyze what is happening in Russia and can we call it a civil war. Well, first of all, the first news appeared yesterday late in the evening, but I decided not to record the video because I believed this was fake. I thought this is an informational operation of Ukrainian intelligence office or whatever to cause problems inside Russian population. But in the morning, it turns out to be true. So let's look how these events unfold, because this is important for the general understanding of what is happening inside Russia inside Russia. So, first of all, yesterday in the evening, the leader of the private Russian army Wagner Group, Prihozhin, said that regularly Russian army shelled his uh, groups that were in the rear, resting in the rear, using artillery, missiles and helicopters, and that hundreds of his boys, as he called them, died because of this special military operation of one Russian army conducted against other Russian army. Prigozhin claims that the Minister of Defense of Russia, Shoigu, personally came to Rostov, which is close to the border with Ukraine and location of Wagner Group, to conduct this operation against Wagner army and later escaped like a woman. In Russia, they like don't like women and they compare everything that is weak or bad or stupid to women. But what can you expect from Russians? So anyway, uh, Prihozhin became furious and decided to uh, take a revenge. Um, he uh, claims that Shoigu escaped to Moscow after selling his army and now he wants to get him. And everyone involved in this anti prihozhin army operation must be punished. So what he is doing now, he calls not a military coup or rebellion, but a march of justice. Well, <clears throat> then... He uh, recorded a video and an audio address, which can be heard uh, via different channels, including Telegram, where he says that now he started moving yesterday in the evening. He started moving from Ukraine to Russia, to Rostov, and possibly later to Moscow. Uh, to uh, look for this justice to punish people. And he also asked not to build blog posts, not to demonstrate any resilience and possibly for Russian people to hide on the way of uh, the movement of his army to avoid any accidents. He has 25,000 soldiers with him and he claims that all sane Russian society if it exists, will support him on his way to stop. And I was trying, I put down this word, I was trying to learn it. Um, a, a bad, a bad and shame. So anyway, uh, the way he Russian army fights in Ukraine, regular army, uh, was often uh, criticized by Prihozhin. He traditionally claimed that Shoigu does not know what to do, does not supply him with everything necessary, and in general he felt shame for the way Russia looks in this military arena. So, uh, still, he blames not Putin in this situation, but the Ministry of Defense, Shoigu. And this is whom he is looking to uh, punish. So, uh, now they, um, of course, the Russian Ministry of Defense, headed by Shoigu, say that uh, it is uh, not true. They did not shell Prihozhin group. Uh, this is just to start a coup or something like that. We don't know what is real, honestly. In this Russian swamps, everything is possible. It may be fake, it may be not. But for us, it's a win-win situation. Of course, a dangerous one, but you know. Uh, 
all the news claim that Putin knows. I, I, I really don't know what Putin knows because he lives in this totally parallel reality, but they say he ha has all the information about um, what is happening between Shoigu and Prigozhin, that uh, Russia has opened a criminal case against Prigozhin for a military coup, uh, which can result in 12, 20 years in prison for him. Uh, the spokesperson for Putin, uh, Peskov, claims that um, they are doing everything that is needed. And this is another very serious problem inside Russian population. They always lack information, even the one that they could be uh, allowed to know. And it's difficult even for their military and soldiers to react because actually they don't know what is happening. Something is happening, but they don't know what is happening. Also, uh, it is uh, recorded uh, that many people in Putin's administration were speaking about such possibility of uh, Prigozhin's rebellion a couple of weeks before, and that they were expecting something similar to come, and they are all in panic because this really looks like the start of civil war in uh, Russia. And, uh, like... Um, it can be. It seems very unrealistic for me as a Ukrainian because like, <laughs> but like you wake up in the morning and there is no Russia, what can be better? But anyway, <clears throat> uh, many uh, now are afraid what will happen to uh, them. Also, <clears throat> after this announcement on video, uh, Prigozhin uh, started moving in the direction of Russia back in the evening yesterday and lots of armored vehicles of Russian regularly army appeared in Rostov, uh, which is the closest military block post, staff post for uh, Russian Shoigu army. And also uh, lots of block posts appeared around Moscow. And now it looks like Russia is, uh, is in war, you know, finally. Uh, Operation Fortress was announced in Rostov. And according to the local publics, Telegram channels and other stuff that we have access to, uh, they um, don't have enough soldiers because, like, you know, they are busy ruining Ukraine. And they have started uh, calling uh, this term service to soldiers, which are totally inexperienced, provide them with weapons, give them better airs and thus preparing to meet Prigozhin in Rostov. FSB and General Surovikin, which makes it like more real and makes me believe it's not fake at all, recorded a video address to the soldiers of Wagner Group asking them not to listen to criminal orders of Prigozhin and to follow commands of regular Russian army. And uh, like, of course, this does not seem very real because this connection between soldiers and commanders perhaps is better in Wagner group because like, um, like Wagner and Prigozhin uh, communicate often and like these people are on contract, they earn more money or they used to earn more money and so on. And perhaps Surovikin will be used as a communicator between, I don't know, Putin and Prigozhin, uh, just because Shoigu cannot. Shoigu is the enemy of Prigozhin, and all of that started according to Prigozhin because of Shoigu's uh, wrong decisions. And of course, uh, also Russian media has lots of news on that, uh, and at the same time, they um, try to attract attention that Ukrainian armed forces used this situation and started surrounding Bakhmut. Like, why shouldn't we? Uh, so once again, USA and all the other media prove this is real, but uh, we don't know what is happening. <laughs> and uh, at this moment, when everything was like unfolding in this informational field, Prigozhin informed that he crossed the border with Russia. So back from Ukraine, he moved into Russia. He said it was not a problem for him to cross this border because once again, it was protected, not like by serious guards or military who are once again busy killing Ukrainians for no reason, but they were protecting uh, the borders with the help of this term service soldiers, which are typical like 18, 19 years without any uh, battlefield experience. And they simply let Prigozhin enter. And uh, also, 
before the start of this rebellion, Prihozhin recorded a couple of videos where he said that Russians were actually killing civilians for a year and a half. And he also claimed that Ukrainians did not bomb Donbass for eight years, which is a very popular narrative of Russian propaganda. And I often encounter this idea in comments from Russian trolls, which is totally untrue. But now even Russian org Prihozhin says that it is not true, which is an important precedent. At this moment, I saw a morning recording of Prihozhin speaking to uh, Rostov military, uh, in Rostov, uh, where they were trying to communicate and this regularly army representatives were asking him to stop and he said he won't. They surrounded Rostov, they took all military objects inside Rostov under their control. They shot three helicopters of regular Russian army, tell me it's not civil war, and now Shoigu claims he is ready to move to Moscow and uh, to look for Shoigu, Prihozhin is ready to uh, go to Moscow. So they've left all of their positions in Ukraine. They crossed the border with Russia, super strong and super protected country. They took all of its military objects in Rostov under their control. And now they threaten to go to Moscow. That would be a nice trip and I'm ready to record as many videos as needed to uh, keep you updated. And of course, uh, Russia started blocking his social media accounts. They disappeared in Vkontakte, which is a very toxic uh, Russian social network. Uh, but uh, videos appear in Telegram, they become uh, viral and um, Russian providers started filtering Google search or something because uh, tonight, Google check demonstrated that approximately at 1 a.m. only 25% of Russians had access to news. So they cannot Google news. They cannot Google news in Russia and they like it. So um, they start hiding this information, which demonstrates once again that something serious is going to happen in um, Russia, possibly. So now Rostov is under control of Prihozhin Wagner Group and anti-terrorist operation is like there, but they did not succeed. And hopefully they will start moving to uh, Russia. In, to, to Moscow, I'm sorry. And in Moscow, there are lots of blog posts and uh, people get checked, their passports are checked. And once again, finally, they are getting to feel what is war. Of course, we cannot have, we don't have to get overexcited because it's Russia. Everything can start, finish, then start again. We cannot predict what is going to happen. But obviously, any troubles inside Russia are good for Ukraine and its allies because, like, we can do what we need and they are busy eating each other. Monsters often do that, by the way. Also, uh, Russian stocks, Russian ruble falls tremendously, once again, because of the threat of the civil war. And Prihozhin demonstrates an alternative for so-called Russian elites, because I'm sure many, many, many are tired of this war. Not because they are good Russians and they feel sorry for the sins and crimes they committed in Ukraine, but because they want to travel, buy, sell, and so on. So one more thing, important thing that I want to mm, remind that Prihozhin is not a good Russian. He's not fighting for Ukraine or justice. He's fighting for his boys, as he says, maybe potentially for a power in uh, Russia, or he has some presidential ambitions or I don't know, Tsar ambitions. But he is the one who killed people in Bakhmut, who ordered to kill children. And his boys, whom he protects, are actually former and even active Russian prisoners who were ready to kill and rape and loot Ukrainians. So don't start feeling as they are good. Both teams, if it's possible to say so, are evil. And our task is like the more damage they can cause to each other, the better. That's the position of Ukrainians and those people who care about peace and freedom in the world should be. Uh, so we have to remember who is Wagner and Prihozhin, who is Putin and Shoku. These are all evil people who caused lots of deaths, who caused lots of troubles to the world in general. 
and uh, at the same time i would like to finish on this optimistic note there are lots of lots of jokes in ukrainian internet i'm sorry if this video is long but it's important there are lots of jokes first like prihozhin starts asking uh Zaluzhny for more weapons <laughs> give you more weapons and like Zaluzhny is thinking hmm <laughs> and also uh, another joke that i like first russia was second army in the world then Russia became second army in Ukraine. And now Russian regular army is second army in Russia <laughs> of the Wagner group. So anyway, let's observe what is happening. Remember, we have a stream today at 9 p.m. Kyiv time. So join me and perhaps we will be talking about Russian civil war prehorsion and new updates. And uh, thank you for coffees. I will definitely be happy <laughs> to drink coffees today. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. Uh, let's watch what is happening in that Russian swamps and Slavo Ukraini.